And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Midnight Ride. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you into the Puritan Barn, into the Now You See TV studios for the Midnight Ride with myself and John Pounders. Tonight, the living dead of Peru. We're going to be connecting something ancient with something that's happening right now. We're going to be looking at the ancient history of this good old flat earth, how it ties in spiritually with what's manifesting right now. We're going to tie it all in with the Word of God and put it out there to where it's meaningful to us right now. And the best thing about it, you don't have to wait very long because we are now live, live, live. What's up, guys? I'm, I'm actually really excited to do this show. This has been something that I've been following for, I mean, ever since it happened. This is crazy stuff. So I'm excited about it. I'm glad to be here with David. It, you know, we've been doing this, this shows together, David, since 2016. So we're looking at seven years of doing these shows. I look back on the timeline and I'm just, it, it amazes me that seven years have gone by that we've been doing and covering topics like this. And it seem, just seems like we never run out of things to talk about because things just keep ramping up and going crazy. Yeah, and there's things like this that just explode into uh, what's going on right now. We've been saying that things like this are going to happen, and we're going to be looking at some things tonight that are happening right now that, you know, sometimes you just hate being right. But, you know, this is happening right now, and we need to understand the significance of it and be aware of what's going on. Something else that's happening right now that I need to make you guys aware of just so none of you guys get scammed or anything in the YouTube comments, the Rumble comments, and sometimes just in the emails, there's been somebody uh, impersonating Now You See TV. I can't remember the name of the email. I can actually look it up, but it's Now You See TV something. Let me let me look it up for you guys because I think you guys need to be aware of it. But um, the email is Now You See TV officials at gmail.com. First off, I'll never email you guys asking you for anything on a YouTube comment or anything along those lines. If you want to email me, go to our website that's linked in the description. You'll find my email there. Don't believe any kind of email you get from anything random like that, okay? Make sure you go to the website and email me directly. There's always people trying to do that. There's, I mean, me and David constantly have people trying to ruin what we're doing here. And, you know, thankfully, thanks to the Most High God who has had our back through this time, it hasn't happened, but I have no idea what they want, but don't um, don't fall for it, okay? Let's put it that way. And um, with that being said, we're going to look at a word from our sponsors, and we will be right back with tonight's broadcast. And I might say yeah, also that any of you that have emailed this, let us know what's going on with that because yeah. we're, we're going to find out. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. We're going to be right back after a word from our sponsors. Thank you. Many mainstream companies put dangerous chemicals in their products that contribute to disease and disability. This is why it's so important that we take care in the products that we consume. The skin is the largest organ in your body and it is the covering to your temple. Our sponsor tonight is Sugar and Spice Soap Company. They create all natural and biblically clean soaps and beauty products. They even have a soap for Midnight Ride listeners. Use coupon code NYSTV to receive 10% off all your purchases. Link in the description. If this is true, then our country is in a lot of trouble. We would have these trips, these special trips. But he said, my, my daddy takes the bodies to the grocery store and he grinds them up and puts it in the hamburger. 
and nobody ever knows it. How can kids six, eight, ten years old be describing rituals that come from a book like the, like the Book of the Dead? It's hard to get your mind around people being capable of this kind of evil. All right, guys, we are back. Thank you, guys. If you guys have would like to check out any of our sponsors or our websites, I've got FOJCRadio.com down there. I've got NYSTV.org down there and all of the other sponsors that we have. If anything down there interests you, make sure you guys go check that out because, look, you know, we've been, had a strike here. We've had strikes there. And we've been shuffled around several times, so I, I don't know how many more channels we got to lose. But guess what? We're going to keep trying to to push forth, and and uh, thankfully God has allowed us to continue to doing this. So make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys um, just go subscribe to other channels too. David has his channel uh, FOJC Radio. It is called Underground Church FOJC Underground Church YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go subscribe to that. Uh, and we have several other channels as well that are listed on our YouTube channel. So make sure you guys check those out. Um, with that being said, I don't have anything else to say. David, do you have anything you want to add before we get moving on this? Well, I might make mention tomorrow night, uh, 8 p.m. Central, we'll have a live stream uh, on our YouTube and our Rumble channel. Uh, helps the holiness, putting off the old man, putting on new, and Tuesday night, on our FOJC Radio Underground Church, we will be premiering a new regular broadcast on FOJC Radio, Drawing Living Waters with Adam Yabara. Adam is the uh, the fellow that does these dynamite thumbnails. Some are just absolute classics that you see. He's just a wonderful brother. And it's going to be really, really different, unique broadcast, kind of like Sanctified Bob Ross. And it's going to work in some things for homeschoolers or just not anything out there like it. So we're very thankful for that. And you can check that out 6 p.m. Central on our Underground Church YouTube channel. So thank you very much for that. All right, guys. So gather your coffee, gather your tinfoil hat, whatever else you have to have to make yourself feel secure, because we are getting ready to talk about a subject that sounds completely insane to those of you who have not been following what's going on right now. But in 2023, it actually seems pretty normal. So we're going to be talking about it tonight. David, I'm going to hand this over to you, and we're ready whenever you are. All right. Well, let's ride. Let's ride. And we're going to begin by looking at some of the Nazca lines, which are in Peru. And in 1968, I was a senior in high school when Chariot of the Gods came out by Eric Von Doniken, and I read that book, and I would be converted to Christ within a couple of years. And that just opened up a new paradigm of wonderment of all of the mysteries that are here on this good old flat earth. And when after my conversion, within about a couple of years later, I became fascinated with the Word of God, how that it contained the answers and the understandings for these things. And that has just been a compulsion with me to this very hour. And as we look at these ancient lines, and these are huge, and these are in Nazca, Peru, and we can see there a spider, and we can see a monkey, this bird, and there's a lot of these, and they're huge. And what's amazing about them they can only be seen from the air. If you were down on ground level, you'd never see this because you have to be from an aerial position to even see these things. And it's just absolutely amazing. These things go for miles. I mean, massive structures. And some of the lines on them are so straight, it's amazing. Yeah. the uh, And, you know, our, our ancient aliens friends, well, this just proves that E.T. was there and uh, E.T. did this well. No, what this proves that there was an ancient uh, civilization that had a lot of technology and that was tapped into fallen angel knowledge that 
had a lot of capabilities that uh, we don't like to admit that they have. But there's the understanding of what's going on here uh, from Scripture, and we see these animals, the monkey and the spider, and in the Word of God we see an association of animals with idolatry. In Ezekiel 8.10, So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And animals were worshipped, the worship of the creature instead of the creator, Romans 1 and 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And these things became a talisman, and they became a magical sigil. These were put in places where the ley lines would be at the place where the magnetic energy of the earth would be at its highest point. And all of these concepts are in place here, that they would be trying to use these sites as a place to draw occult power and to use them in magical rituals. And this is a book entitled Egyptian Magic by E. Wallace Budge, and he talks in here about, on page 363, about this concept of using amulets, and there would be amulets, sigils, talisman, and even these big earthworks that would be used to tap into these earth energies and to use them in magical workings. And uh, Mr. Budge writes here on page 63, the amulet is typical of teeming life and of the resurrection. The frog-headed frog goddess Hecht, the wife of Kemu, was associated with the resurrection, and this amulet, when laid upon the body of the dead, was intended to transfer to it her power. And they would have these frog and animal amulets, as it says in the Word of God in Ezekiel 8, that they would put them upon the walls. And here in Nazga, we see this same uh, structure that we see there. And there are some amazing things in this area. And in this area, there in the area beyond Nazca, and here we have Machu Picchu. And there's an amazing square mountain. There's a square mountain that is um, just absolutely crazy to look at. It's absolutely, obviously, artificially made. And this is really the border of the Wild West here. And beyond this place, the Peruvian jungle becomes so dense that there are literally treasure hunters that go out into this place and they will bring back. And we're going to show you some of the things that have been brought back from this area. And there's literally places here where archaeologists have not been. And we're looking here at just literally the wild west of uh, the jungles of Peru. Now, this is a book that I'll be referring to uh, throughout the presentation this evening, Lost Petit and the Non-Human Remains of Nazca. And this is a book that was written that has the facts and the documentation, documentations about some of the things we're going to show you that have been found in this area. And uh, some of them, they're called the Mummies of Peru. And the, the city of Lost Petit, and people are now, the more that this is studied and investigated, it's believed that the city of Pati is the famous lost city of El Dorado, the famous lost city of the Incas. And this lost city of Pati, Pati meant, was also known as the Tiger King or the Jaguar. And there's a huge connection in the ancient mystery religions that came down through Babylon of the importance of the big cat, the tiger, and the jaguar, and the leopard. This was symbolic of the ruling power of the, the people that came down right from Nimrod. And what, we're, what we have here, we have in this area 
It was well established in the antediluvian world, and after the dispersion at Babel, we saw a regathering into this area uh, because it, there are some places that are called navels, uh, at literally like the navel of the earth. Mount Hermon would be considered a navel. Uh, this is just one here at Machu Picchu in this area of Peru. This is one of the most toxic places spiritually on the earth. I would not know of any place that would be more toxic in, in that uh, dark energy that is coming forth from here. So we have so many things here with this lost city of Petit, the lost city of El Dorado, and this association that the very name of lost Petit it means the jaguar. And we have here from the book uh, Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, and it shows here the picture of Nimrod. And it's interesting here that the oldest drawings of Nimrod portray him as a Negro. And he was the son of Cush the Egyptian. And I believe our best understanding is that Nimrod was a black man. Now, what we're told is that there were no black people in the Americas until they were brought over by the Spaniards as slaves. But what we see as we study the South American cultures is that the Olmecs, the Olmecs definitely were a predominant of, of black people. And it, it's obvious when you study the Olmec heads and the Olmecs also the jaguar symbology, we're going to be showing you some pictures that um, are just amazing. We have the tradition of the werewolf. Well, among the Olmecs and among these other uh, South American and Mesoamerican peoples, they had the tradition of the were jaguar. And here we see Nimrod in the leopard spotted garment. And this was the sign of him being the, the ruler. And also on the right, we have the Egyptian priest that has the leopard spotted robe. And we have here the, the cat head there. And this big cat symbolism is huge as it came down. Nimrod was the mighty hunter. And there are even traditions where there was a half breed that was a cross between a jaguar and a lion that Nimrod would use in hunting. He was the mighty hunter. And this symbology carried down among the ruling classes, these mystery religions, as they spread all over the earth. And we see this show up in a big, big way in these Mesoamerican cultures. And John, I remember you even brought this out in one of your presentations among the British royals. Yeah, I, it's interesting. So the, the legend goes really, really far back, and I can explain it quickly if, you, if you'd like. But Yes, if you uh, want, go right so ahead. So the legend has it from this is from different people that are associated with different religions. This is pretty much the consensus of what they believe this is. And I'm not saying I believe this, but this is what they believe. They believe the skins that God sowed for Adam and Eve were passed down, given to Noah, all the way down through to Noah, and these skins represented the the lineage of the main kings, the power behind the world. So Noah would have been of the main lineage of the human kings that were around pre-flood, and so he would have had these garments. And so then in the book of Jasher and um, a couple other books, it says that what happened was Noah had the garments, and his son Ham stole the garments. A lot of people believe that ties in about uncovering his father's nakedness and all this. He stole the garments. The book of Jasher continues to say he took the garments and passed it on to his son. And then his son, Cush, passed it on to Nimrod. And then it says Nimrod put the garment on and became a mighty man. And everything was subject to him after that at that point. So, And then continuing, like David said, it goes on through the royals that we have today it's just a continual representation you see in almost every royal family you're going to see them wearing the big uh drab with the spots that are on that some of them look like leopard spots some of them look like big black spots but the symbology is exactly the same and um it's super this is really cool this guy on the left to me david looks like a frog and you were, you were talking about the frogs it's interesting and it reminded me of revelation where it talks about the three spirits that look like frogs who yeah. go off to deceive yeah. the kings of the earth. 
there's most definitely a repeated reptilian connection as yeah. we we look at these entities and these drawings most definitely there is most definitely yeah. now this is a picture and this comes from the book the mystery of the Olmex and here we have an actual uh, a, a drawing and a photo of an actual uh, carving here of the Ware Jaguar. And we've had pictures on here. We've talked about the Apkalu, the Birdman that came out of uh, Mesopotamia. We have the uh, Seven Rishis in the Far Eastern tradition, the Apkalu in the Mediterranean. And we have here these Ware Jaguars who look very much like the Apkalu. And what I think we're looking at here, we're not necessarily looking at uh, somebody that's going to turn into a half-human, half-jaguar creature at the full moon, but we're looking at people that have been genetically altered. These are human-animal chimeras that become really uh, monstrous and b bizarre entities. And many of these were very, very powerful uh, early generation Nephilim that brought, according to all these traditions, that there were these supernatural creatures that came into their civilizations and imparted to them knowledge. And this Ware Jaguar tradition and the tradition of the Jaguar and the big cat, this is one of the uh, signatures of this mystery religion that came right down uh, from Nimrod and was spread over the earth at the time of the dispersion of Babel. And I believe there was another uh, when uh, in the Bible we read at the time when Joshua came into the land of Canaan, it talks about Og being the last of the remnant of the Rephaim. And it's it's believed and it's a, it's a solid conclusion that uh, because we see him show up later in Gaza, but it's talking about the last of the remnant there on the east side of the Jordan. And when they saw the handwriting on the wall, if you will, of what was coming to them with the army of God, they just left. You know, many of them folded their tent and went home. And uh, I think this is what it's speaking to. And I think at this time, we see many of them coming to the area in northeastern United States and also into South America. And in the, um, the way that the ocean streams carry, uh, this is right into the area and well into Guatemala. And we, we have Peru that's on the Pacific side. But these are places where these ocean currents would, would take you right to. So there's a reason for that also. Now, here we have a drawing of the murder of the Mayan king. Atahu aha aha boy yeah get me to pronounce it Atahu Alpa and uh, we see and he was murdered by Pizarro and I'll just read a little bit this is part of the myth of the Inca a part of the myth of the Encare and I'll, I'm reading here from the the Lost Pati uh, book and it says the Encare or Encara myth is one of the most famous legends of the Inca. When the Spanish conquistadors executed the last ruler of the Inca people, Atahualpa, he vowed, according to the legend, that he would come back one day to avenge his death. According to the legend, the Spaniards buried his parts in several places around the kingdom. Now, what is that reminiscent of? Mm, Osiris. Absolutely, Osiris, you see. So we see here a repetition of this is a retelling of the story of the mystery religions. We've got the leopard. We've got all kinds of things that are showing us that we're, we're dealing here with the continuation of the Babylonian mysteries. Yeah. Okay. It says, according to the legend, the Spaniards buried his body parts in several places around the kingdom. His head is said to rest under the presidential palace in Lima while his arms are said to be under the Wagapta Square of Tears in Cuzo, and his legs in Ayucuacho. Buried under the earth, he will grow until the day that he will rise, take back his kingdom, and restore harmony in the relationship between the earth and her children. And this legend is out there, and this is widely believed by, uh, to this day, 
by the people in this area, and they're looking for the return. And this is actually a demonic prophecy. Satan doesn't give up easy. And Satan was driven out uh, of the land of Canaan, and uh, these the, the massive Inca civilization, it fell also. But these ancient spirits that built this civilization, they have vowed to return, and they are returning, and I'll say they are here. We're going to see every evidence that indeed these ancient spirits are back. They're wreaking havoc upon people in this area. And uh, we're going to see some just absolutely amazing things that are that are going on in Peru right now. When and, I look at, oh, sorry, Dave. No, go ahead. right ahead, please. I was going to say, when I look at this picture, it's interesting to me. He's got the, the two feathers almost looking like um, one of the Roman figures there as well and then on the left they this guy and i don't know who did these these artist portrayals i just looked up some of the oldest ones i could find of it uh the one on the left looks like the indians where all the elites built built their house over uh that graveyard jekyll island it looks just like the indian tribe that were almost seven foot indians that they found all uh buried over the top of this ancient uh canaanite basically it, it was a it looked like a canaanite altar that the elites built their house over well, this is where they would sacrifice people but if you ask the caretakers the the caretakers said these race of indians which they called indians they called them indians because um you know they thought they were i guess from india because they thought they were aryan but they were like almost seven foot tall the skeletons that they found so it's interesting man yeah. there's so many um uh, tales of this and that it, it's really an it, they all blend in together and i think you're right i think it's just the same tale told again over time, but maybe um, since at one time the earth was actually kind of all together in one area, it would make sense that one ruler had domain over that. So uh, when did the earth split? It was in the time of Peleg, is yeah, that right? Yeah, the days of Peleg. In the days of Peleg, yeah. so it's interesting. Yeah. Um, another part of the legend of that the Spaniards recorded when they were there in 1572 uh, about the treasure, the lost treasure of El Dorado or Petit. It says the treasure included a great sun disk made of gold and other gold objects and 13 mummified Inca rulers who had before reigned, uh, reigned before Atuhalapa, the Inca king executed by Pizarro. And there was another uh, explorer down in this area that recorded that he found uh, 13 uh, statues of the 13 Inca rulers. So we see this number 13 recurring also, mm -hmm. which of course in the dark world is the name of the, the number of the coven. And uh, these things, these uh, unmistakable uh, occult signatures appear over and over and over again. Now, in 2017, uh, there was quite a stir in the oh. There's some kind of audio on there but let me turn the audio off but i was trying oh. to do a screenshot it sounded oh. like sound like daily dose of internet in the background there let me go back here okay <laughs> here we go go ahead well what we're looking at here is a little fellow by the name of albert and albert was found in 2017 in this area of Peru. And in the right there, uh, you can see that Albert, he had three fingers and they're, they're not really fingers at all on both hands that he had like three fingers. And sometimes these are called mummies and they're not really mummies. And this creature was found down there and nobody is saying that this isn't a body. This has been confirmed to be by multiple examinations. This is a body of something. It's not like this is some kind of plaster Paris fraud or something, but it is definitely a body. And of what? That is what we must think of. And the controversy was huge and it was intense uh, down in Peru. In, uh, and this hit in 2017. There's all kinds of stuff over the Internet. 
and this one book that I'm reading from the the Lost Petit and the Non-Human Remains of Nazca by Thierry Jamin. He was a French man that was right there in the middle of it uh, doing the investigation on this. And not only, and you know, this, I mean, and this looks like E.T., doesn't it? I mean, let's face it, E.T. phone yeah. home, there he is. And uh, so, and you know, a lot of people think, well, we've seen this in Steven Spielberg. Well, we might say, well, how does Steven Spielberg know? <laughs> you know, yeah. is what we might ask. But there's no controversy that this is not a body. And what it is a body of, we're going to be we're going to be talking about. And something else very interesting about Albert. Albert is asexual. Albert did not have any uh, genitalia. He was literally a little androgynous fellow. And this also harkens us back to what we've done in studies on Midnight Ride about the androgynous God and about all of the traditions and Gnosticism and uh, the Kabbalah that the the original gods were androgynous. So this is very fascinating. Well, next week, David, believe it or not, the show that we're going to talk about has a lot to do with that because I've been investigating, you know, we're talking about the number when we did the Book of Enoch commentary, which in three new ones are actually dropping tomorrow on nystv.org, uh, the Book of Enoch uh, commentary. But we talked about how many angels fall fell onto the earth. If, if what Enoch is describing yeah. is legitimate, we have over 30 million angels that are walking around on earth. And so I'm going to be investigating this whole androgynous thing, the idea of angels walking on earth and all of that next week. So that's exciting. But getting to this thing, you're right, David, this looks dead up like ET. It also um, resembles lamb like Aleister Crowley saw yeah. uh, when he was you know, on one of his, you know, satanic trips through time or whatever he was doing. He saw lamb as well. And as I was saying before, the, the whole frog thing can't be kind of thrown out of my head. You know, that revelation frog thing can't be thrown out of my head. It's just, it's, it's all like got the foot fingerprints, the three little fingerprints all over it almost. So, and the way, and in this book, uh, about the non human reigns, lost petit and the non human remains, it talked about how that characteristics of their anatomy were only found in reptiles and birds mm. that the way their body joined together in their hips and everything that they were definitely uh, not human. And this is another one of these entities that was found in this area of Peru in 2017 called Josephina. And there's about seven or eight of these all together now that have been found and pulled out and studied. And Josephina uh, just like Albert, and you can see there that the picture Josephina had eggs in her. So Josephina it looks like she's got a bra on or something too. What is that? Well, there's there was a disc found, and there was a disc found in places and on their hips. And just what this disc was all about, they really don't know. And their bodies were were covered in diatomaceous earth and cadmium oxide, which oddly enough is used in the, uh, the working of nuclear uh, power. So what that's doing there, you know, uh, file that under, let's figure it out. And you see here, these are little bitty guys. You know, they're not large, they're very small, but there is no debate that these are actual bodies of something. And uh, we see here Josephina, and we have... Um, uh, there was another one that has received um, a lot of publicity. I'm trying to go to the next one here, David. I'm sorry, my okay, mouse, no my problem. mouse is wanting to no problem. Play, play games with me here today. And uh, this is Maria. And uh, there's another one. Uh, well, there's several. There's seven or eight of these all together. And Maria has been studied extensively. And these are, you see here, the elongated skull. And you see all over in these three fingers here that are characteristic on Maria and Albert and Josephina. And, uh, of course, that elongated skull, this is something we see uh, 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 to, to in common with the elongated skull. This is a thing that is found all over these civilizations. And, what, and you know, there's a real mystery and a lot of study about the elongated skulls, but many believe that they were wanting to 
of imitate these gods that came and give them the knowledge. And some of these come from their skulls being wrapped and uh, people literally wrap the skulls of their babies to make them elongated. But some of these Peruvian elongated skulls, are they're shown that, boy, these are not something that was done through manipulation. They were born that way. And uh, it is definitely very, very um, mysterious. But for us that know the Word of God, it's not. Now, here's another one of the Nazca lines in this very area. And look at that. Who does that look like? <laughs> well, that looks like Albert and Josephina, and Maria doesn't. So here we have this ancient Nazca line that is so old, who knows who put it there? And why was that put there? Because I believe that creatures like Albert and Josephina and Maria, they have been living in these underground caves ever since as far back as you want to go. The sons of God and the daughters of men came in that these have been there for a long, long time. They're there right now. And there's some things coming out now in Peru that they're not little bitty guys like Albert and Josephina, but they're big and the bad, and literally uh, they're going to peel your face off. Do you, do you remember the – so you probably remember this. We talked about this a long time before, but I remember researching it. The legend of the storks, you know how we all have the stork legend where yeah. – the storks carry the baby, and then they drop the baby into the people's homes. This is like the the way people used to describe how babies came out. There was like a nursery rhyme about it or a cartoon or something. Yeah. I don't know how the word got out, but uh, there's, a, there's a group of these – this island they found in, near Transylvania – where they there were the, this war described between the little people and the storks these little people were so small that the storks were swooping down and grabbing them and taking them off and flying them through the air and the legend has it that people were looking at the sky seeing them carry these little people across the sky yeah. and they thought they were carrying babies to people so interesting yeah, yeah. and uh, you have the thing in the uh even here in North America, the legend of the Thunderbird, there was a case that was written about a lot right over in Illinois yeah. where there was a young girl that uh, was uh, almost carried away oh, by yeah. the th Thunderbird and right in front of her parents. Yeah. Now, we're going to play a little video for you. And I tell you what, Albert and Josephina, uh, the, the best estimates is that these little fellers lived uh, 500 A.D. to 1,000 A.D. They're very, very old very very old and uh dna testing is certainly not exact science but they're old they're old no doubt about it and they are they are representative of things that are very very old but we're going to show you albert and josephina get around and here not long ago just a few months ago albert and josephina made a show in front of the mexican congress so let's just listen to a little bit of this and it just keeps getting more and more interesting Scientists in Mexico pulling back the curtain on what they believe are aliens and put two of those corpses on display. Uh, take a look. Uh, these small mummified specimens were unveiled at Mexico's first ever UFO hearing yesterday. Yeah, it looks like E.T. You're right. Uh, the alleged alien corpses were found in Peru. They're believed to be 700 to 1800 years old. They only had three fingers and elongated heads. X-rays of the aliens were also shown, and experts say one of the bodies has eggs inside of it. Hmm. Maybe we're going to have alien babies. A lot going on in Peru. Yeah. That's right. So <laughs> is this real? Do people believe uh, I, this? I don't know. As Leslie but... Lopez says, we want DNA samples. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then yeah. we're eventually going to find out that aliens look nothing like yeah. we think they look. No. It looks nothing like E.T. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a stone carving. It really does. It does. What is that? Yeah. I don't know. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great AB. All right. Well, we don't need the ABC promotion there, but... Um, it does look it looks crazy man it's like it's one of those things that is hard to you you because you could think of it so many different ways you could think of it like mm -hmm. the military the whoever they are the they that we talked about that one week that they made this to make it to make it look like this is a real reality that we're getting ready to face and and they're trying to fake an alien invasion or th these could literally be uh real beings that you know, if so, if these are real beings, Dave, these are real people, the real things that have been in the earth for a while, would you, if you were describing these beings biblically, where would you say these little people came from? Do you think this is like one of the 
one of the man creations before Adam and Eve, like in the the six day man type thing? Or what do you what do you think about that, man? Well, I believe that these are the products of the the when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and we know from the book of Jasher that there was also the the manipulation of the animal genome as well as the human genome. And we have not, you know, we use, and the Nepalim, the fallen ones, we, we usually think of the big ones. But we have, we've done broadcast on the little Nephilim, the fairies, the trolls, and all of these things. And uh, in, the, in the Bible, it speaks of the Gamadim, uh, their being entire. And this literally uh, is translated in the Bishop's Bible as pygmy. So there's tremendous, uh, and as much or more of the traditions about the little Nephilim as the big. So this is just little Nephilim. It's what we have here, just little hybrid creatures. We could call them hybrid human. And the way the argument's always framed is, well, is this human or is it ET? And it's not A, it's not B, it's none of the above. What we're looking at here is a hybrid. We're looking at a human hybrid with uh, between humans and fallen angels. And this got to be, you know, this show, Albert and Josephina showed up before the Congress of Mexico and a lot, a lot of people are, are believing because we're going to show you the actual DNA results of the DNA results of Albert, Josephina, and Maria. And it's interesting when something like this rears its head, who are the spin doctors that are called in to debunk it and to kind of do a little ha-ha? Well, Neil Gadra- G- D- Neil deGrasse Tyson, Mr. Globe had himself. Oh, yeah. We'll call Neil deGrasse in here. And also, we do, we're not playing it for you, but NASA did a video. You know, NASA did their little debunker video on this, and they put that out. So let's just listen to what Neil deGrasse Tyson has to say here about Albert and Josephina. Um, so a Mexican journalist displayed bodies of two supposed non-human beings uh, in, the, in Mexico in front of the Congress in Mexico, okay? Um, Each with three-fingered hands and elongated heads. Now, uh, before we all mock uh, the video, right? Because it's gotten a lot of mocking. It looks a lot like E.T. But as I said, NASA just announced for the first time a director of research on UFOs. So they are taking uh, this overall topic more seriously. What's your take on this? Well, first of all, I like what they did in Mexico. They, They had what they claimed are alien bodies. They brought it out in front of their Congress. That's better than leaving them in a locked box and saying you and no one else can get to see them. So that's a start. But in science, a, 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 a new truth, an objective truth is only established when multiple labs can analyze whatever your claim is. When we brought rocks back from the moon, we distributed them to all the labs of the world. So everybody participated in that discovery. So here, bring out samples to others and let other people, skeptical people, in other labs test and this. So what, either verify it or falsify it, and then we move on. What was your reaction when you saw the images? I was surprised, because if they're from another planet, why do they look so human? They have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, shoulders, hips, femur, a, a rib. Why? Most life on Earth shares DNA in common with us. It looks nothing like us. So how could it somebody... So, so that was my first thought. Second... <laughs> Um, any corpses or mummified remains, there is no bone in your nose. It's an open hole into your skull. These aliens have intact noses, okay? If indeed that is their nose, okay? I don't think for sure. So, <laughs> well, so I, that's odd after 2,000 years to still have a, a nose with two, with two cavities in it. So that's odd, but they should share it. That's how, right. we, that's how we determine what is true and what is not. All right, Neil, thanks so much. Great to talk. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, let's give Neil some uh, samples to test. He's got the moon rocks, and then he'd have the moon rocks, and he'd have the um, the samples of Josephina and Albert also. Now, let's confuse the issue with a few facts. And notice he was very, very careful not to say that there had not been DNA tests done. There's been a bunch of them, and we're going to show you the results of those DNA testing. But, well, it's not been given to everybody. You know, Neil doesn't have it. NASA doesn't have it. So, uh, if uh, you know, it's just, it's spin. It's spin. That's all it is. But let's confuse the issue with a few facts here. Uh, in this book, uh, Lost Petit, 
and the non-human reins of Nazca, of uh, Mr. Theory Jammin, who was right there uh, firsthand through all of this, uh, through all of this drama. Fascinating read. It really is very compelling. And we'll read just a little bit, uh, confuse the issue with a few facts. And uh, quoting here a broadcast um, on June 20th that was uh, quite a bomb, it said that uh, in Peru, it said all of the analyses carried out show us that this is not human DNA. And a few examples, this is one that was done by William Brown, who works with the world-renowned physicist Nassim Haramein. He said, after seeing the results of the DNA analysis, I would say that the beings from whom the samples were taken and whose DNA was analyzed do not belong to any known terrestrial category. They do not respond to any species on Earth. There is no sign that this is a fake, and based on the initial DNA results, Maria is a genuine relic of unknown origin. The results of DNA analysis do not support the idea that these were altered human remains at all, and there is no evidence to suggest this is a hoax. The people who make this claim were not basing it on data, but on their personal opinion and viewpoint. Now, from my personal point of view, which I believe is precisely informed by objective scientific data, I see strong indications suggesting that these were genuine, anonymous remains of unknown origin. And there's more. Uh, Concerning, this is on page 144 and 45 of this book, uh, Maria's DNA and Watiwa in particular, which was another one of these little creatures, at this point in the analysis came as a bit of a surprise. In Sri Lanka, the Gentech Laboratory had communicated to us a few days before the event its first conclusions. And Gentech is a very renowned, uh, reputable laboratory top of the line. It says, this is the report from Gentech. In our samples, we detected 95% DNA belonging to primates and 5% unknown DNA. We concluded that Maria's mummy is not human. In fact, it is this 5% of unknown or mutated DNA that allows us to confirm this without the slightest doubt. We are facing a kind of hybrid. We multiple DNA tests have indeed proven that this is a human hybrid. And for those of us that know the word of God, we know that this is a hybrid that came about as a result of the sons of God meeting with the daughters of men. And that these things uh, we've talked a lot too about uh, how that in the earth, going into the earth, many scriptures that the in the heart of the earth that these things have remained. We're going to give you some more scriptures in a little bit about what the Bible says prophetically about these these little creatures and also some big ones coming out. And uh, and there's more. I want to give you some more facts to just give you an idea of the multiple DNA tests that have been run on these little fellows that. Uh, uh, you know, if you would have listened to Neil deGrasse Tyson or if you would have listened to the NASA video, you would have think, well, there just hadn't been no tests done. But they were careful to spin it without saying there hadn't been tests done, if you really listen to what these people are saying. But here's another one. Uh, this is recorded on page 168 of this book. It says the first results of her analysis were surprising. First of all, concerning Maria, the DNA taken from a vertebral bone revealed that 33.67% of the sample belonged to Homo sapiens. A bacterial contamination amounted to 17.5%. And finally, more than 46% of the DNA was of unknown origin. Uh, going on, it says um, DNA and carbon-14 analysis of various biological materials, including the famous three-fingered hands with such an intriguing aspect. The detailed analysis of the paleo DNA, DNA results were surprising. This hand, now we're talking about the little three-fingered digit hands on all these entities, 
had only 1% of DNA in common with Homo sapiens. And that's believable. Them little three-fingered uh, hands, they don't look human, don't they? And indeed, they are not. Only 1% human DNA in those little three fingers hands. So when far from the fact that there has been no DNA tests, there have been a lot of them. And I'll read you one more. There have been multiple DNA tests made by multiple laboratories. All of them agree that these little creatures have huge amounts in some parts of their body. It's 99% non-human, like in the little, in uh, the little fingers. Um, Okay, here's one on the Wawita mummy, another one of these little creatures. So the mystery of Wawita remained, especially since, according to the experts, the volume of his skull was 19% larger than that of a human child of his age. However, the DNA analysis carried out at the Federal University of St. Petersburg revealed that Wawita had only 25.6% of DNA in common with Homo sapiens. The truth is that there have been credible lab results run from all parts of the world that all show that there is non-human DNA in all of these little creatures from Peru. Mm. And it's so funny. People people think, you know, this is... Actually, I'm seeing the chat. You guys are ruining your credibility talking about these things. Look, there's DNA evidence. We know that this kind of stuff happened. The Bible speaks of a genetic manipulation that took place uh, in Genesis mm-hmm. 6 and all that. So I think that, you know, there's going to come a time here where people are going to see some stuff go down. And if they don't understand that this is even a possibility, then they're, they're going to be greatly deceived. There's a lot of people that still believe that the rapture was supposed to take place last month and they I guess they got left behind. And there's a lot of people that when UFOs and aliens come, they're going to see the Pope baptizing them, and they're probably going to get in the pool with them. Yeah. And so we're, we want to talk about these things because it is interesting. It is an anomaly. It is something that is a mystery in our world, and we can figure it out biblically. That's the cool thing about it. So just to kind of clarify you know what what we're doing here, for those of you that just joined us. Go ahead, David. Yeah, and certainly, I, oh boy, I'm uh, I'm not naive. A lot of people are going to have a big hearty har har. Well, laugh on. There's some people down in Peru that aren't laughing, and there is an air. What is going on right now? And this has been breaking for about two months. And there's all kinds of things that you can look at uh, on social media platforms of people that are taking videos of what they call the face peelers. There are people in this area of Peru that are being murdered. They are murdered, and what they are describing are uh, entities that are seven foot tall, that can fly, that literally are peeling people's faces off. They are being killed. And this is, uh, uh, you know, we're just going to show you some video here. And, uh, you know, (laughs) let's just roll the video, John, and just watch a little bit of this. Uh, started about 37 seconds. Is that where you cranked it up? I think up? I've got it set for 37 seconds. You just have to tell me when All to right. stop Yeah, it we'll down. watch about three minutes of this here. And it, it, this is happening just within the last two months. All right. First and foremost, I'll go over the claims being made by the villagers. On August 8th, the Daily Mail published an article titled, Terrified Peruvian Villagers Claim They Are Under Attack from Seven-Foot-Tall Aliens, dubbed Face Peelers, as they plead with authorities to send backup. Now, these villagers belong to the Ikitu tribe and live in a very, very remote area in the Amazon rainforest, known as Alto Nanay in the state of Laredo in Peru, which is so remote, it's actually a 10 to 18 hour boat ride from the nearest authorities. These villagers claimed that they've actually been under attack by malevolent creatures that they call face peelers for the better part of two months at this point, beginning in early July. Now, an Ikitu community leader named Jairo Avila has been very outspoken about these attacks. And the main description of these creatures that everyone's hearing allegedly comes from Hyro's face-to-face encounter with one of these beings. According to Hyro, the beings are at least seven feet tall, have large heads and yellowish eyes, wear some form of metallic body armor, are able to fly using some kind of technology in their boots, and can also vanish. He even likens them to the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. 
According to Hiro, he even fired upon one of these beings twice with a rifle, which seemed to have no effect. Now, just to be clear, he's not the only villager to have given this description of the creatures, but his interview with RPP Noticias, a popular radio station in Peru, garnered the villagers a ton of attention on their troubles. Many of the other villagers allegedly had their very own first-hand encounters with these beings when one of them actually tried to abduct a 15-year-old girl. When the girl and villagers attempted to stop this abduction, the girl sustained a cut on her neck. The villagers then began nightly armed patrols and demanded the Peruvian government aid them by sending police or military to the village to investigate. Eventually, authorities did respond, with a small contingent of armed police arriving via speedboat and investigating. It was shortly after this that Peruvian prosecutor Carlos Quintanilla claimed that these seven-foot-tall flying armored aliens were actually illegal gold miners belonging to a foreign mafia using jetpacks. Yes, gold mining criminals using jetpacks. That is the official story. They even have a picture of the girl who had her neck injured holding up an iPhone showing a man using a jetpack. So I guess that proves it, right? I'm getting serious hostage vibes from this picture. Like, does this look like the face of a girl who is honestly showing you what she saw? Because to me, it looks like someone is telling her to hold the phone up, but that could just be me. Of course, different types of jetpacks do exist and are becoming more and more viable, but they're extremely loud and extremely hard to pilot. Just the smallest incorrect movement, even made by a highly skilled pilot, can spell disaster. And we're talking about thick jungle. Lots of stuff to stop you from making a clean getaway. None of these villagers have said anything about the sounds the jetpacks would be making. And the villagers have been left with this really unsettling... Very good. Um, and here again... There's this is all over Peruvian news. I mean, it's all over it. And there's no doubt that we've got dead people with their faces peeled off. There's no doubt. And we're going to see that there are these ancient entities that are called the face peelers. And there's no doubt that the that there's not just a few but hundreds and hundreds of eyewitness accounts of people that are seeing these entities. And it's no doubt that the Peruvian military has been sent in. And also there are multiple accounts and testimonies that the United States has sent some elite military units that have been seen in this area. There is absolutely something going on. Now we're going to listen to a little bit of Timothy Alberino, who... I'm not sure. I'm not going to say it. People are telling me that uh, Mr. Alberino has gone down there now. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but uh, I know he's been in this area before. And let's just listen to to Timmy here, uh, give his tale on what's going on here. Uh, Pelacaras, the face peelers who approach these villages and try to abduct people, and they're often dressed in cloaks. Um, they're saying that, uh, that one of the interesting details is that these entities apparently have discs on their the bottom of their shoes that project a red light and that enable them to float off the ground through the jungle about a meter off the ground and they can also lift off into the air uh, so when the villagers fire at these entities they see them they shoot them the entities are apparently bulletproof and and they just they disappear or they float off into the jungle that's what they're saying and and the way that they're describing these entities disappearing is is uh, reminiscent of the, the the predator from the movie where they sort of disappear but you can kind of still see them moving around and in fact uh, there's videos uh, uh of the villagers flashing their flashlights and they're actually they actually in one video they see the entity it appears to be behind a tree up in the sky either sitting in the tree or floating behind it and they put the flashlight on it and and i think now of course this is subjective but i think you can actually see the entity it moves its head and it looks like a large gray alien and it it, it has that that uh bulbous head with the large almond shaped black eyes in fact you can even see the flashlight shining off of the eyes and it and it, it slightly moves its head around um, and I believe that that is actually what these natives are encountering and what they're shooting at are these beings that they're seeing with their flashlights at nighttime. So I don't know what exactly is occurring there. I can't confirm or deny any of it, but I will tell you this. The villagers were so distraught that they 
they demanded the presence of the Navy to come and and help them with this problem to protect them, to defend them against whatever this is that's attacking them. alien attack far from nobody talking about during the villagers attack moments this light showed up and we're going to dive much deeper into this and more and if people are talking about this i'm going to break it down to a much deeper depth get ready for the ever-loving gravy to be slapped out of your mouth first off the prosecutor came out today saying that in peru the alien attack was just illegal miners oh well that's what it is huh well, I found something even bigger. So check this out. The villagers is being attacked, right? And they said it's been happening since July 11th. Strangely enough, the military, the U.S. military, the U.S. Space Force has literally been deployed there. This is some of the information I found here. And look at this down here. It says Equitos Base. We're going to go deeper down into this so that we can tie these events together and show you how things arose in certain places that makes this really significant. First, here's a video clip of them talking about the troops will enter. The Peruvian government authorized the entry of the U.S. troops into its territory for joint training with the country's armed forces. The action plan establishes activities with the armed forces related to the international military exercise, Resolute Sentinel 2023. The military drill includes the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Space Force. The entry of the U.S. troops was approved by the Congress on May 19th with vast support of the far right. Only left-wing lawmakers oppose it, whose members agreed that the measure will jeopardize national sovereignty and will not guarantee the country's security. But yeah, the face pillars happen to be some hooded goons. With all this special technology, how can they be illegal miners? Just illegal miners? Special flotation technology, cloaking technology? That sounds militaristic to me or like some other forces that they may have opened a portal up, I'm not sure, but this video right here, look at this. You see a green orb emanating and it gets huge. Listen to- In the city of Laredo, Peru. Look close. It, it looks like they're on a beach or like close to the water side. You can see if you just closely. Well, are you, oh. So why am I so hyped up it's about this? You want to keep watching, or you want to? We look at these bases that the military. Well, I think says, that's good. That shows what I mean. These, said, um, these. I mean, it's the per dynamic. Pretty dynamic of things that people are recording there, and everyone can just laugh it off with a ha, ha, ha. But I'm convinced when you look at this total picture, when you look at all the way back to the Nazca lines showing back as old as old gets, the pictures just like Albert and Josephina, the things that have been found here, DNA proof that there's human hybrids that have been here in this area. And now what we have manifesting, well, let's, let's just go to the Bible and let's see if we can... Uh, make any connections with uh, what is going on. And you have been hearing this from John and I for a long time, that you are going to see the return of the Nephilim.
We have been saying it, and people can whistle by the graveyard if you want. You can mock. Uh, well, I think I'm pretty much immune to mocking by now. But, uh, you know, truth will find a home. Genesis 6 and 4. And at the time I read this verse, the, uh, mo the mass of the huge majority of American Bible schools and American pulpits are going to tell you that uh, this isn't talking about fallen angels mating with human women and bringing forth human hybrids. And there'll be some that are going to be mocking and laughing uh, right along with... Um, with the NASA folks. But there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And in Genesis 6:11, it speaks to the fact of the great corruption of the human genome. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence, Hamas. And the corruption, we could read from the book of Jasher, that the corruption of the human genome was very deep. There was only eight people on the ark, and the scripture said of Noah that he was pure in his generations. And there's a text that was read multiple times from the book of Jasher as it says that, uh, not only was the human genome corrupt, but also the animal genome was corrupt. And in Isaiah 26, 19 and 20, we see here a prophecy. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead, the Rephaim. It speaks of the casting out of the earth, the Rephaim. Well, for the earth to cast them out, they'd have to be in the earth, wouldn't they? And these little creatures were found down in caves and caverns. Verse 20, we don't want to miss this one. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Fact number one. There were giants on the earth in the days of Noah. Fact number two, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There's going to be a repetition, according to our Lord and Savior Jesus, of the conditions of the antediluvian world in the days before his return. One of the big ones, no pun intended, there were huge, huge giants the Bible prophesies the return of these entities, and right now in Peru, we have not just a few, but whole villages of people that are saying they're being attacked by these giant entities. I believe there's something going on here. This is going to not just go on here in Peru, but we're, we're seeing already on a lesser scale these things repeating in other places, and this is going to get to the place where uh, you're not going to be able to keep a lid on this baby. Because uh, it's happening, it's happening now, and the Israel of God will not mock and scoff. The Israel of God will take notice, and we will understand the times that we are living in. Amen. So, what what do you in my in your thoughts, David? What what do you think is causing all of a sudden these either entities or entities that have given humans new technology, whatever you think this might be, whatever it is, whatever it is. I mean, we know there's an anomaly here. There's something crazy. And I'm I'm just as big of a skeptic as anybody else out there looking at these beings. It's hard for me to believe anything unless I see it with my own eyes. And even then, sometimes I don't know what, what I'm looking at, you know, the, with deep fake and everything going on. But what makes you think that they decided now to kind of test their forces and and see what they can do. Obviously, Peru, the people that live there, uh, they live in the jungle. Technology is at a low point there. Do you think it was because of that? I mean, what is your whole kind of take on this? Well, a couple of weeks ago, we, on our Friday night broadcast, did a teaching called uh, The King of the South. And this was very much in line with a lot of the midnight rides we've done on Tartaria. And we've read and we've talked about the passage in the book of Jubilees, the 10th chapter, where it talks about uh, when Noah's grandchildren were being pounded by these Nephilim spirits, that he prayed, 
and 90% of them were bound into the underworld. And this was the Tartarian, the area of Tartaria. And we have just recently seen uh, Vladimir Putin go to Beijing, and he publicly made the statement that he endorses Xi Jinping's vision of a new world order. This is the reuniting of that ancient Tartarian empire and their goal for a, a one world order. We've talked, we've done a gaggle of shows on Tartaria. And it, it, it's just logical to me. If the busting up of this Tartarian demonic enclave in the times of Noah's grandchildren, if that resulted in a binding, what would the reunification of this Tartarian empire result in, but a loosing of these spirits. And I believe we're in this time of the loosing of spirits, the remover of the restrainer. And I think we are at that prophetic time where these entities are being cast back out of the earth and they're manifesting themselves. And I think these type of occurrences, and there are individual occurrences of these multitudes of them, but this is something that is on such a profound scale that we have hundreds and hundreds of people that are now testifying to this. And uh, I think it's the real deal. People can think what they want, but I think this is a prophetic event. And we're seeing right now the literal casting out of these entities. And this is just going to escalate. It's just going to escalate. So get ready for it. It's coming, whether you're ready for it or not. And, you know, and, and if it is coming, how much more important of timing are shows like this to talk about this? Because the Bible talks about people's hearts failing them for the things that they're going to see that are coming upon the earth and the signs that they're seeing in the sky. And we have people right now freaking out about everything. We have wars going on all over the place. I mean, people are so brainwashed and so manipulated and so in tune with what they're seeing on there that they cannot break away from it. And it's worse than it was in 2020. I see people um, literally almost frantic, you know, and it's, it's, it's sad because in the scripture, it tells us what to think about. Of course, there are going to be, in, you know, times where that are going to be hard and there's going to be war that takes place. Of course, that's going to happen eventually. But when we, uh, the Bible tells us to think on things that are pure, think on things that are holy, think on things that are good, a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And so when we bring these topics up, we're talking about bringing up praise, bringing up the fact that God created all that it, all that there is. He spoke of it in his word, and we don't have to be deceived by it. So when we speak about these things, we uncover uh, the the curtain that was standing right there in front of the great magician, uh, that we call Satan. He's he's behind the curtain. He's manipulating things. And so we talk about these things. And But when the war and stuff that's going on, it's a horrible thing that war is going on. Uh, a thousand years ago, you wouldn't even have known there was a war going on over there if you lived over here because that kind of stuff wasn't uh, something that everyone worried about. You worried about local war. You worried about your family. You worried about the things that you had to worry about locally by doing. And, and even if you were a disciple of the Most High God, they were going and preaching the gospel within the areas that they were preaching the gospel. They weren't tuned into every activity that's been going on all over the world. They weren't believing every bit of propaganda they hear. You know, right now, the only only place we can hear uh, war information from is from propaganda. So we need to be thinking about the people that are around us, you know, protecting our family. The Bible, the scripture you just read, it says when things break off, it says to go inside for a while. Go inside. Yeah. Be prepared to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that being said, David, you did an awesome show. It, if, if there's anything you want to add, I think that there probably are a lot of new listeners that are going to hear this and they're going to say, this stuff is just crazy to me. How can this be of God? How can how can God uh, allow these things and, and all of that? What would you say to them, David? Well, I would say that the basic understanding that comes from the Genesis 6 scenario gives us a perfect understanding. While the world argues, well, is it human or is it E.T.? Uh, those of us that have a biblical worldview, we understand that the corruption of the human genome of the fallen angels, this was the cause of the flood of Noah. And that Satan's game plan is still the same, whether through transhumanism or through these 
uh, freakazoid genetic experiments that they're doing, that this is still indeed Satan's game plan. And whatever your problem is, there's one answer for it, Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus, don't close your eyes tonight before you do. Repent of your sins. Believe in Christ's death upon the cross as the payment for your sin debt. Repent and believe the gospel. Turn to Jesus before it's too late. And it could very well be too late any hour now. I mean, we all know we're not naive. Uh, Jesus said to watch and pray, and we're living uh, in a time where the next time we wake up our eyes, we could be in the middle of full-blown nuclear war, World War III. This is not just fear-mongering. This is just reality. You need to know Jesus, and you can know him. If the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart, turn to Jesus right now. Pray that prayer. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Call in his name. Repent of your sins. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus there with open arms, ready to receive you into the kingdom of God. Couldn't be said any better than that. And also, um, and David's right, if don't wait, do not wait. You know, there's no point in that. There's going to come a time where it'll be too late. Those things will pop off so fast that who knows what's going to happen. I, you know, I don't want to put fear into people's hearts. That's not what we're here to do. But my goodness, um, if you can't see the writing on the wall, then your eyes are not open. So with that being said, what we like to do is, for those of you that haven't already hit the like button, hold off one second. We're going to count to three, and we're all going to pound the like button together. So here we go. Are you ready, David? One, one two, two, three. three. Boom. Bling. You guys hit it. Thank you guys so much for listening to tonight's broadcast. We appreciate all of you who are out there. You're you're working out there towards the kingdom, and we appreciate that so much. And we're thankful to have you guys as brother and sisters and we're thankful to know that there are other people out there pushing the Word of God or at least believing it and being a light in their community, however God has that for them. We thank all of you who are subscribed to this channel. We thank all of you who um, you know just support us in any way you do, whether it be over here at Now You See TV, FOJC, wherever you support, as long as, long as you're supporting what you know is feeding people and giving people, uh, you know, getting people to look towards God that's what's important in this world. We have, we have far too many Christians supporting the opposite of that with everything that they have. And so for you guys that do do what you do, we thank you so much. We could not do this without you. With that being said, David, end us out here. As always, with heartfelt thanks to all of you that support the Midnight Ride Now You See TV, we appreciate it. We are in a war. And we appreciate our friends very much, those that stand by us and support us um, in, in whatever way that you do. We thank you so much. And uh, with that, we just want to say uh, God bless you all. And until next Saturday night, 10 p.m. Central, high five and good night, everybody, from the Midnight Ride. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up.